Hey guys, how's it going? It's Marcos here. And in this video, I'm gonna be making a, uh, it's gonna be a pretty long video, but it's gonna be a video on, on how I like to check the weather and, and see if it's gonna be a good flying day or not. Uh, so first things first, go to windy.com. And uh, we're gonna go over a couple of scenarios of, of of what makes it a good flying day versus a not good flying day. We're gonna talk about skew -tees. we're gonna talk about pressure, uh, we're gonna talk about webcams, we're gonna talk about the thermal uh, option here. Um, we're gonna talk about wind, wind gusts, and satellite views. So, so first things first, what I like to do is I like to just get a good glance of what's, what's gonna happen. Right. For so for me, I would just click on the city name, and then I like the basic view just to start off with. The main thing that I look at when I'm looking at the weather is just whether it's going to be sunny, rainy. That's where I start, and then two, is there going to be wind or not wind? So one thing for me to to know is that if I'm flying in the mountains. I like to look at the, the wind in knots. And just a, a basic rule of thumb for me personally, this can be very different for other people, um, is I don't like to see if I'm flying in the mountains. I, I personally don't like to fly with wind gusts of above 14 knots. Anything above 14 knots in the mountains, I really just don't have fun anymore. So that's my rule of thumb. Uh, you know, I've seen many pilots fly above 14. I've flown above 14. It's just, that's like when we're talking about flying, that's just my fun threshold is I don't like to pass uh, anything above 14. So uh, first things first, what can, what makes it a good day or a bad day, right? What do we need in order to make sure that that flying day is gonna be good first, that the wind's coming from the right direction, I always start with the wind animation and make sure that the wind is coming uh, from the right direction, uh, wherever it is that I'm gonna be flying. That's that's the, the second step after seeing if it's gonna be sunny or not. The next thing is I start looking a little bit deeper into what's gonna happen for that day. So for this instance, let's just look at uh, tomorrow. What is Sunday the 26th gonna be looking like in Boulder, Colorado? So first things first, I see that I'm gonna be having at three wind gusts up to 18 knots. So maybe a little bit on the strong side, but it depends, right? Around noon, it's gonna be good. It's coming from the right direction. Um, so I'm not too worried about that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this little toggle to that time that I'm gonna be flying at, just making sure that the wind's coming in the right direction. And then the next thing that I like to look at is a, a big overview of what the pressure is going to be. Uh, for flying, I, I really don't know what the technical terms are, but for me, I know that anything below 1014 pressure wise is what I would consider a good flying pressure. Anything above 1014 is considered high pressure. And the difference between low pressure and high pressure days is that in low pressure days, the thermals are gonna be a lot smoother. The air is gonna be going up nicer. What tends to happen during high pressure days is that you have these little tiny uh, bullets of, of hot air that goes up and they kind of catch you off guard. So in high pressure days, if you're flying in a, any, anything above 1014, or high pressure day, expect to get really strong little bullets of air. And when you do catch that thermal, it's gonna last a short period of time. And usually uh, you have to turn them really, really tight uh, in order to stay in them. When you have a low pressure day, you can make your turns a lot wider. You don't have to be so aggressive about staying in and, and being so narrow. So that's something that I look at is, I know that if it's below 10, 14, um, it's going to be fun. If it's going to be 
above 1014, well, I just know I got to turn a little bit tighter and be a little bit more aggressive with my, with my thermaline style. All right, let's move on to the next thing that I look at. Um, just by the way, you can change the pressure isolates down here, or you can go into more layers and you can uh, click down here into uh, pressure. Okay. The next thing that I look at when I'm looking at the weather and determining if it's going to be a good day to fly at is the um, famous skew T, which I'm not going to really go into the technical names of what everything is, partly just because I don't even know them. Um, this is think of this video as the 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 for dummy version. So in order for me to know this QT, I'm going to double click. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into the sounding option. And then this is going to pop up. So first things first, I'm going to make sure that my that I'm in the right timing for the for the hour that I want to be flying. So let's just take a look at what tomorrow is going to look like for Boulder at around 2 p.m. So to keep it very, very, very simple, this is the temperature line. I can go ahead and click in this little button right here just to zoom in. Um, to keep it very, very simple, I want to make sure that this red line goes up in this direction and is below this gray line. I know that if the red line is parallel or equal to this gray line, I'm going to be able to go up relatively well. And then when it passes, this other gray line, I know that that's going to be my uh, cap for say as far as how high I'm going to be able to go for that particular day. Another thing that this the SKU-T chart tells you is whether you're going to have clouds or not. So if I zoom out and I can see that the blue line, which is dew point, and the red line, if they're close together or if they touch, that's going to tell me if there is clouds or not. So just to give you uh, an example, let's see if we can find a cloudy day. Let's see where in the country today was cloudy. So I'm going to go into, just to give you an example, uh, thunderstorms. And it seems like down here in Arizona, there's some thunderstorms. So right now, this is currently, if I click right here, and we'll click right there, sounding, All right, take a look at this. You can see that the temperature line and the dew point line are essentially parallel together, and they go up for a really long time. That means clouds. And if they're stuck together in parallel for a really long time, that means that it's a thunderstorm. So just to confirm a feature that I really like in Windy is the webcam option that I use a lot. You can go down here and click on, a, I think S export mode. Uh, no, right here. You can click on the little webcams. This pops up and you can see it. So just to confirm, for example, boom, look at that thunderstorm. Uh, it seems like it's going pretty high up to, what was it saying, 45,000 feet. And I use the webcam feature to confirm what it is that I'm seeing. Uh, next thing that I like about Windy is the satellite view. Um, as I'm flying and I, and I look at the weather days prior, I open up the satellite mode and I can confirm what's going on at that time and see uh, if what was predicted is actually happening. Uh, one thing that I've been studying a lot is uh, Sebastian's line, which I'll show you here in the end what his weather pattern looks like, but I can see uh, cloud streets forming down in Texas. You can, you can do the same thing. So another example is let's go ahead and look at the skewed T for, for example, somewhere uh, here in Texas. And I'm just gonna leave it at the same time just for example purposes, click on sounding. Here, I can see that the temperature line 
was parallel to this gray line. And so what that means is that uh, you can go up relatively well up to about right here. So what, 5,900 feet. And then after that, it starts going up, temperature starts going up, which means that the thermals start to get weaker and weaker. The stronger, the more leaned over this red line is in this direction. So if it was like this, the stronger the thermals are gonna be. So for this instance, uh, just showing you an example, if the lines touch up high, this usually is a cirrus cloud, is, is, is clouds that are up high, which in the satellite view, you can, you can see that they're popping up over here. So when you're looking at the forecast, make sure that they're, that they're not touching up high because otherwise, you know, high clouds, it's gonna shade everything out. There's not gonna be any left for that, for that moment. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. So let's see what's going on it's a little bit further. So let me give you this example right here. Click on that sounding. Good lift, good lift until about right here. Oops, good lift until about right here, 14,000 feet. And then parallel up there, it's, it's cloudy. You can see the high series in the, uh, in the webcam there just for confirmation purposes. So you can use that to see if, if it's gonna be a good day or not. So moving on, um, we talked about pressure a little bit, anything below 1014. I know that it's gonna be a fun day, anything above that. Uh, I know that I'm gonna have to turn a little bit tighter and be a little bit more aggressive with my turns. Um, next thing that I look at is the thermals. I like to see what's happening. The, this little thermal feature in Windy has been a game changer. It came out, I think within this last year, uh, but it's been great because it tells you where humies are gonna be, where humies are gonna be predicted. Um, and uh, how high your lift is gonna be. So if you do one click, it'll show you what the top of lift is gonna be in that particular area. So you can see that Colorado's booming at this time, 20,000 feet, no clouds. So if we go ahead and look at the skew T just to confirm, you can see that the blue and the red never touch. So therefore there's no clouds and that that's something six, six minutes ago. But here in Telluride, let's go ahead and take a look, zoom in just a little bit closer. Click on that, sounding. Good lift up until about, what would that be? Uh, between 16 and 20,000 feet. And let's see what the top of lift says. Click on that. Yep, 19,000 feet. So between 16 and, and uh, 20,000 feet. And just to confirm with the webcam, you can see a little bit of clouds up there, up in the high mountains. Okay, next thing, uh, I talked about webcams, I talked about pressure, I talked about the SQT. Uh, we went over the, the thermal feature. Uh, I talked a little bit about wind and wind gusts, and I went over the satellite view. So that, that's, that's the main thing that I look at um, to see if it's gonna be a good day. Uh, just for fun purposes, this is what the weather looked like on Ju uh, June 19th when Sebastian flew the record from Texas, Southern Texas to, to Northern Texas. Uh, I'd like to, take a look at all of his flights and, and go through the, the recordings just to have it on file to see uh, what that weather looked like. So I can see here that there he was flying from uh, around a 1014 pressure system to a lower pressure system. So that's what creates that wind and that flow that he was flying. And then there was two high pressure systems, one on the left, and one on the right. Keep going. Is it at 6 p.m.? He was flying again from a little bit higher, 1014 here, to a low pressure system of 1002 at 6 p.m. for that day. Q 
here you can see it very clearly. Boom, 10, 10, he took off from somewhere around here and landed over here. So 10, 10, all the way to what? What would that be? Uh, 10, 06. Clouds, it was relatively a clear day. This is starting at 12, two, three, Another thing that you can see here is the uh, the famous convergence line that they, they talk about in Texas where you have partially wind coming from here, meeting wind from here and creating that nice flow that you're able to, to fly and, and fly in that convergence line that the sailplane pilots talk about in, in Texas. Thermals. Pretty nice day. I think that's about 10,000 feet. Um, yep, eight, nine, eight, four, 9,000 feet from when he started at three. So three, p, uh, sorry, um, uh, 1 p.m. that day. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sunset. Cape, that's just the probability of thunderstorms. How stable it's gonna be that day is, was not that unstable, meaning that there was not a high likelihood of, of things overdeveloping. Medium clouds, no medium clouds, so nothing that was overcasting. Rain and thunder, no rain and thunder across the path. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19. Another thing to mention is that when you're flying in the flats, I already mentioned that when I'm flying in the mountains, I don't like to, to fly where it's gusting more than 14. Uh, in the flats, it's another story. I usually don't look at upper winds all that much just because there's nothing that you can hit when you're flying high. Um, so I usually just look at surface winds, not fl flying in the mountains. It's important to look at uh, altitude winds, but when you're flying in, in the flats, flatland, in my opinion, it's not as important to look at just because um, air doesn't kill you, it's the ground that kills you. So making sure that you're within a safety uh, range, that you're not flying with anything more than, I would say 50 kilometers per hour is would be my limit, um, gusting to, that day Sebastian flew, it was, uh, he was flying somewhere between um, 25 kilometers per hour gusting to around 55 kilometers per hour. That's what that amount of wind is, which you can see here uh, in, in, in knots. Uh, 